Welcome back to International Finance. I am Andy Kim, your Dr. Finance. Today we're going to cover uh, the first half of chapter 5 of Un, Resnik, and Chulun. Right? A um, couple of logistics. Um, you're doing your homework, and that homework comes from end of chapter problems. And I assign, you must have realized that I, I assign like uh, the number of uh, the multiples of 3, 3, 6, 9, 12 kind of things. Now, some of you question that what if the questions are different from the questions from version 8? I am using version 8, as some of you said, right? No problem, just do it, but uh, uh, strictly following this uh, textbook, by the way, please. Um, only a small part of the questions will be different. That, that's what I find, right? And then, uh, and then I will copy those question statements from my solution manual so that you will be able to uh, tackle those questions, identical questions from version 9. Preferably, I suggest you, uh, strongly suggest you to use this version 9 yourself. But just in case you stick to version 8, right? So don't worry about it. Um, so pay attention to those question statements that I uh, upload, um, which will be version 9, okay? Uh, anyway, and then some of you, right, um, were uh, addressing those interesting questions in the current issue presentations, right? Uh, for example, Bitcoin kind of issues, right? Uh, how much do we have to pay attention? Yeah, they, those are very constructive and then very uh, interesting hot topics. Um, and then uh, your personal opinions are more than welcome in our class discussion board. And until the evening of uh, Saturday, right? Saturday evening. You can, you know, upload your opinions as much as you can and then question and answers back and forth. I will count those things and then it will add up to your participation grade. All right. And then before we move on further, maybe we could check out how the FX market is doing today. Right. US dollar versus Korean won. Okay. Um, so one US dollar is now 1134 Korean won, okay? Uh, which has been slightly going down today a little bit, but it's been there. And you know, those, uh, uh, what has been driving over the last month, why this US dollar value has been going up. I told you before, it has to do with the uh, US treasury, uh, 10 year treasury rate these days, right? How strong is the US dollar? Essentially, it gets back to the uh, strength of these uh, US, uh, US treasuries as a safety, a safety asset, right? And then the interest rate of US treasury has been going up because of the concern of uh, uh, expected inflation, right? With this quantitative easing or the uh, lax uh, fiscal policy after this COVID-19. Uh, whichever way you label it, right? The concern of inflation has been going up. And then some of you were addressing the issue about the Bitcoin price. Now it is more than um, 7,000 won, which is like a 70 million Korean won, right? Crazy, right, you say it. Um, but it goes together with it, right? Um, as an inflation hedge, people are trying to invest in, you know, uh, Bitcoin or other alternative assets, hopefully safer assets like gold or something. But the gold price has not been going up that much. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I told you once, right, that maybe in the future, Bitcoin or cryptocurrency has to be included in regular textbook of finance, international finance, right? That doesn't mean that, I don't mean that uh, uh, cryptocurrency has to be uh, recognized as a, uh, you know, uh, has to be one of the, our currency that we, currencies that we uh, transact, legitimate currency, I'm not saying that, but the presence of it, right? The questions that we 
face these days are so serious, right? Now it is one of those alternative assets that people take very seriously. BlackRock was the first one, and recently Bank of New York Mellon, right? Uh, any of you are interested in uh, banking history in the United States, right? Bank of New York uh, comes from Alexander Hamilton in George Washington era, uh, who died of a gun duel uh, with uh, Aaron Burr, not Chomba, but uh, Aaron Burr, right? And so those important banks started to put their money in cryptocurrencies a little bit, right? Um, even though each bank's like, exposure may be small compared to their total asset amount, but in the aggregate, it would be like tremendous. So that's why. Where would that a Bitcoin price go? I don't know. Nobody knows. I, I'm not <laughs> suggesting you to put your money. This is very risky and volatile. So I'm not suggesting you, but have a sense of, you know, how do you say? Um, get a sense of what's going on, right? That's good. Anyway, um, foreign exchange market, right? What is this chapter about? Now, we are finally going into that quantitative side of uh, international finance, which is, in essence, FX, right? FX. This uh, encompasses the conversion of purchasing power from one currency into another. Uh, bank deposits of foreign currency, the extension of credit denominated in a foreign currency, uh, foreign debt. Um, and, and the foreign trading, trade finance, right? Import and export, and then letter of credits and bankers acceptance, all these kind of things. Trading in foreign currency options and futures and contracts in uh, currency as swaps, right? Cross currency swap, all these kind of derivative, derivatives, right? And so for that purpose, right? It is the uh, basic building block, which is covered in chapter five, seven, and 14 extensively. So here we are going to talk about FX spot and forward market. Today we're going to spend uh, our time in the FX spot. Uh, and then next week we're going to cover forward market and then move down to the next chapters, right? Now futures and options and swaps, please wait for that. We are going to talk about the basic concepts of that, right? In chapter five, we briefly cover those things. Now. Chapter outline, it looks like this. Uh, first, we talk about functions and structure of the FX market and then FX market participants. Uh, there, we are going to talk about who is doing this business, right? Who is transacting as a major player? Who are the clients? Okay. Correspondent banking relationships. We're going to talk about it briefly. And then we're going to move down to the nuts and bolts of this uh, mechanism, FX. Spot market right there we're going to talk about the spot rate quotations and then we'll we're going to learn about bid ask spread and then spot fx trading we're going to also talk about cross exchange rate quotations not just two currencies exchange but three different currencies right and then cross exchange of other two right it's, anyway a triangular arbitrage will naturally appear afterwards with this cross exchange rate uh, and then spot foreign exchange market microstructure. We're going to talk about that. And then um, next week, we're going to talk about the forward markets where the key concepts are forward rate quotations, long short forward positions, and then non deliverable forward contracts. Uh, NDF, something called, right? And then forward cross exchange rates and swap transactions. And then we're going to talk about forward premium. Then briefly, we're going to discuss something called exchange traded currency funds, right? Now, so the who are those players in this FX market? I drew my diagram in my whiteboard uh, at home last year. I think this is a, a I mean, um, interesting diagram. I, I never knew that I'm good at drawing diagram a little bit like this. Um, yeah, anybody can do this. But here we have two different countries, I would say. One is USA, born in the USA. The other is Germany, 
Uh, yes. Ja, wollt. Uh, Germany. Hey. In the US, you have Citibank. In Germany, you have Deutsche Bank. And the currencies are different. You have US dollars over here. And then Deutsche Bank, you have Euro currency down there. So what kind of players do we have, right? Um, and then what kind of markets do we have, by the way? We have two banks. Uh, and then these banks, you know, they are the ones who are uh, exchanging these currencies as a major player. We call them wholesale market in this bank-based, right? All these different banks uh, exchanging currencies and setting up the, a set, the price is being set over there. FX rate is being set in that wholesale market, 도매금융 or interbank market, okay? Uh, equivalent jargon, interbank market, wholesale bank. And that's wholesale level. Mm, then where's the retail level? Or uh, that's the relation between these bank, uh, banks and other clients, right? Like people like you and me, um, you know, sometimes you have dollars and then you want to convert it into you a euro and go to Citibank, right? And then get some quotes and then do your transactions to convert it into uh, euro. And, and they can also transact with the Apple kind of companies or other kind of multinational corporations, right? Like Google and Facebook, right? And then this is called the client market. Uh, retail market is for more for individual, uh, whereas client market, you know, it's for companies and banks relations. So in German side, who they, do they have? Well, for some of you, right, retail clients, right over here, and then some of the uh, corporate clients like Mercedes Benz or BMW, Bayerische Motorenwerke, right? Uh, <coughs> Did I pronounce correctly? Anyway, um, so those are the market structures. So wholesale interbank market and retail or client market outside. Okay. Now, um, FX market is two tiered system, right? Two tiered system, Inter interbank market, wholesale market. They have about 100 to 200 banks around the world, right? Um, they are they stand ready to uh, make a market in foreign exchange making market means like making the deal happen market making yeah you buyers and sellers get together and I'm gonna make you as a uh, deal going on right market maker and the non-bank dealers account for about 55% of the market um, and as of 2019 so not only banks there are some dealers right dealers who explicitly keep their balance of currencies right and then there are fx brokers okay who match buy and sell orders but do not carry inventory and fx specialist okay so you see the distinction between the brokers and dealers so dealers are the ones who have inventory of the assets they want to buy and sell okay for example in the fx market it's, it should be US dollars or other currencies that you have in your inventory. You take that inventory risk, right, yourself. Brokers are the ones who don't keep that, you know, inventory, okay? They don't carry that risk. They're just, you know, bringing these buyers and sellers together, okay? Just, uh, and then, uh, and then um, there is a, a client market in the retail market, okay? Just like you and me, right? and then other corporations like Mercedes-Benz going there and then converting this currency. Now, market participants include international banks, their customers, and non-bank dealers, FX brokers, and central banks. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, how does it look like? Yeah, it looks like this, right? And interbank market. And um, you see a lot of, you know, FX traders looking at their screens um, and we're going to talk about it a little more and a uh, little more pictures. Kospi, no, the Korean one and Japanese yen FX rate and Europe to Korean one, 
yeah this kind of rates are shown i told you before this the numerator denominator thing over here is a bit misleading because this shows how much um euro is worth one euro is worth in terms of korean one so it should have been labeled as krw slash eur because it has to be based on per unit of euro okay and this one again korean one per great british pound right um this one again korean one per uh, us dollar right and japanese yen again okay um this is more like uh, 100 Japanese yen is worth uh, 899 or 900 Korean won. So one to nine relation that you see over here. Chinese yuan, yeah, again, right? So those are the interbank markets where the banker or the, the, the trading desk uh, traders sit over there and then make their transactions in that interbank market. Retail market is more like what you've seen during your travel, right? Um, you, uh, the, the, you, uh, our exchange students, very courageous ones, right? Um, great, I respect you. Uh, taking the risk of you know, flying all the way from your home country to South Korea, not into North Korea, by the way. Um, and then on the way, you must have seen this kind of uh, liangqian in Chinese terminology or uh, currency exchange booth like that. Um, these are the ones in uh, Singapore, UOB or RHB Malaysian banks. They are exchanging currencies. And then those are the more official exchange market. And then uh, there are some more, how do you say, um, smaller market. Okay. Not like the regular banks doing it, but any private companies trying to exchange currencies um, so those are prevalent and that's the retail market okay or client market now what I show you over here is a slight change not a slight change actually but a drastic change uh, in FX market historically historically the FX market um, has been based on the phone calls, right? In the trading desk. Actually, when I was working at Bank of America, um, we had a FX trading desk in our dealing room, right? And their major business was, you know, buying and selling currencies for, for uh, tra trading with uh, Samsung Electronics or CJ kind of guys. And they were busy on their phone. And then when they get pissed off, they're breaking the phone like crazy, like, ah! And then it's driving crazy, right? Um, they get stressed up and then shout and yell like crazy. Um, not all the time, but sometimes when they get frustrated, right? Um, but those days are gone, right? Largely gone. These days, um, more trade is done electronically. And high frequency traders, they play a lot of roles these days. And what you see in this graph is a proportion of monthly total trades executed electronically, okay? And over this 2000 year 20, it's about 60% range, right? Not like this, but the machine is doing all these transactions um, in millisecond unit, right? Amazingly fast. And then uh, one of the prominent FX traders in this market these days is called XTX markets. Okay, that's high frequency traders in FX market. I show you this uh, web page, oh, yeah, 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 web page like this, right? And it's looking more like tech firms, and it is a tech firms, fintech firms, right? Um, innovation driven algorithmic trading, right? Um, yes, and then working workspace looks like that here are there you know advertisement going on like this right um so a lot of things have changed in this market the wholesale market right and then is it a gaming company or something no starcraft no um yeah so those market changes are taking place right 
drastically and then a lot of big players have changed their face okay now exhibit 5.1 in your textbook shows the shares of reported global foreign exchange turnover by country so this picture shows which country or which uh, which country is the major playing ground uh, where the FX trading is being done interestingly uh, it's not the world Wall Street it's London right <laughs> it's London um, it takes up about 43 percent of FX trading okay and then US comes next 17 percent you see that share has increased significantly for UK but United States and the rest of the world, their portion got shrunk down. Mm. Uh, Singapore has stayed there. Hong Kong increased a little bit, but Japan decreased. Switzerland, eh, France, nah, and China, 2%. They have doubled their share, right? Oh, impressive growth. Australia, 1%. Canada, 1%. And then the, the other parts of the con uh, world has uh, shrunk down. Um, in terms of trading proportion. Now, FX market, right? Um, it is really 24 hours alive, right? Because the world goes round and round every, you know, second and somebody has to exchange the money even, you know, when you are asleep, right? Money never sleeps. That's why, okay? Is that a movie title? Huh? Wall Street 2, Money Never Sleeps. Is that right? Yeah, go ahead and watch that movie, I guess. Um, anyway, so what you see over here is 24-hour range um, by British, I guess that's British uh, GMT time. And then you see the FX conversation messages um, during those hours in 2001. Um, what this tries to show you is that when Tokyo is in lunchtime <laughs> um, the trading volume goes down okay um, yeah uh, but other than that uh, the major message is money never sleeps they trade in FX market um, so if you want to work for uh, FX trading desk um, you may have to get up like in the midnight and then go to your bank uh, while other people are asleep, right? That's one thing you have to keep in mind. But, you know, that's life in bank. And then this exhibit shows daily FX turnover by currency against all other currencies. Uh, what you see is the predominant position of the US dollar. 88% uh, over here, right? And then... Um, and then euro comes next, Japanese yen comes next, and pound sterling, Australian dollar, Swiss franc, and then Canadian dollar, Chinese yuan, and other currencies come. Um, so total is double counted. So uh, if you are, if it is not double counted, it's going to be hundred, but they are double counting it. So it's eighty-eight out of two hundred. Okay. Um, so that's that. This fact, right, the fact that US dollar is being traded the most intensively um, plays an important reason, gives an important reason about our exercise in cross-currency uh, FX rate, right? Now, wait for that uh, of a handful of slides later. Anyway, so that's the trading volume by currencies. Now, Exhibit 5.4 shows the average daily foreign exchange turnover by currency pairs. So which currency to which currency, right? Back and forth. They take up what percentage? So dominant position, right? So far is US dollar to Euro, right? Transatlantic transaction, transactions has been dominant one. Uh, and then US dollar to Japanese yen is the next one. And then US dollar to British pound and Australian dollars and Canadian dollars and Chinese yuan comes next and Swiss franc over here and then Hong Kong dollar over there and where's Korean one is somewhere over here okay so that's that um, now 
This Exhibit 5.5 shows the ranking of liquidity providers in the FX market in 2018. What do you mean by liquidity providers? They are essentially market makers who stays in the market. And then when there is a, uh, or there is a seller in US currency or seller in, let's say, Korean won. Okay. Um, but temporarily, they cannot find a buyer in the market. Okay. You come to the market as a bank, right? Interbank. And then you try to exchange, you try to, okay, uh, sell Korean won and buy US dollars. You need to find a buyer for this Korean won. But not many people trading Korean won so that you cannot find the buyers of Korean won right now. Maybe you have to wait for an hour, okay? Um, but you need to transact right away, okay? Who will take care of that situation so that they will buy right away for you? That's market maker who comes to you and then provide a liquidity, buy that Korean one for you, okay? That's liquidity provider. Um, who is working in, in that liquidity providing business? Yeah, global banks, right? Typical big uh, wholesale banks. And then number one is JP Morgan and UBS. And then the next one is XTX markets that you've seen before, right? This is non-bank, but they come as a third one. Um, these are high, high frequency traders. One of their jobs is to provide liquidity. Okay. Sometimes when there is uh, uh, no sellers, okay, they become sellers uh, and then, you know, provide bid ask quotes accordingly. Okay. Um, yeah. And then overall spot market and then emerging market currencies and electronic trading markets. Um, so those lists, you can just uh, take a look at it. Perhaps this could be your uh, potential employer in your job market, right? Um, pay attention to where they have a uh, Seoul office or Hong Kong or Singapore office, right? Send your resume directly to them, right? Uh, anyway, so from the correspondent banking and the next, I'm going to talk about it in the next uh, video. Okay. okay, see you. Thanks for watching.